Hey, what's up people on YouTube watching this video? Uh, so for today's video, I'm actually gonna be poking around Framer's latest release with their analytics improvements, bringing in now funnels with ID tracking and A-B testing, super pumped to try this out. In fact, this is a big dire need at Blitzit. We haven't been able to really truly A-B test um, you know, different theories that we have, especially on our homepage. So really excited to try that out. But from the spring release showcased by the Framer team, uh, from what I can see, the setup looks really simple and really easy to implement and doesn't seem like it's gonna take a lot of time at all. So I thought I'd make a video about it. We're gonna jump into Framer right now and we'll just poke around, get some A-B testing going. I've got a very particular hypothesis that I wanna test out. But just before we get started, if you're new to this channel, my name's Omar Farouk. In this channel, I share my journey as a startup founder, the ups and downs, and trying to achieve a breakthrough success. So if you're interested in all of that stuff, then do smash that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Now let's jump into Framer and take this A-B testing feature for a spin. All right, so we're inside of my Blitzit Framer project. We're gonna jump into analytics from the top navigation bar on the right. Here you can see, Unique visitors, 60K. We've got a lot of traffic coming to the site, so perfect timing to start testing things out. Now, here's the A-B testing feature. I do know we have to put some tracking in place to set proper goals, um, but before that, I just wanna kind of jump, dive in straight away to see the pricing for all of this. So if you look at this, if you try advanced analytics, experiment with A-B test, add funnels and measure conversion performance, usage is metered and billed monthly. You get 25K free events every month. So we, we can uh, account for the first 25K as free, but thereafter, they're gonna charge us uh, between 25K to 500K, 45 pounds. You know, that's about 50 plus dollars, I would say, uh, maybe $55, depending on the exchange rate. You can check that out. But per additional 500K events uh, above that, it's uh, 95 pounds plus. So that's again, maybe about $110, $120. We're gonna go ahead and smash that start trial button to jump in or add that on to our plan. Um, and then we'll go ahead and click A-B test again. We're gonna be testing the home page. We'll click confirm. And from here, we gotta start configuring. So you can see this nice little tooltip at the bottom that says, this page has an A-B test that needs configuration. Let's click that conf configuration button. I like how it guides me through the process, so that makes it a little bit more user-friendly versus trying to hack the technical setup by yourself. So here we see A-B test, add a conversion step to your setup and start your, uh, your test. So we'll go ahead and add the step. That's pretty obvious, so we want the first step to be page view on the home page. I want this to just be page view, so we'll click that as mentioned and we'll set this to home and that works perfectly fine. So we're gonna be optimizing for view homepage, right? So what I didn't realize is if we undo, go back a few steps, the first step was already set up based on the homepage as we, when we started this uh, process. So view homepage, page view for homepage has already been set up as the first step. So when we click the add step here, we're actually adding the second step. And I just didn't realize that. I didn't pay attention to that first step at the top right hand corner here. So. We're gonna do now um, the second step, which is click download. So they click the download call to action. Yep, it's a click event. Now the question is, how do we actually set up that ID? Um, and in fact, I wanna actually test further clicks on the other download button. So if you go to the the actual funnel, if I play this. So we have the download buttons across the landing page. Once you click that, you come into the download Blitzit page. And here you can choose the specific uh, application you want based on your OS, right? Now, I'd like to track these clicks as well. So we'll go back into the setup and we'll go back to this we'll say, in fact, I wanna rename this to say home um, component versus video. We'll get into what I'm testing in a moment. Download app. So download app, that could be the funnel. So view home, click download button, download app. So we got our funnel there. Um, we don't have tracking in place. So this is not how we want it. 
Now to do tracking, I saw from the video on what Framer released, um, they have this simple way by adding an ID. Now the question is, how do we add that ID? Let's go ahead and find out. We can't add it over here. I don't see any options here in the button link either. Let's double click the component and maybe we can do it on the button component level. Ooh, there it is under link. We found it, tracking ID. Let's call this, in fact, you know what? Let's not call it anything. Let's give it a variable because we need it for variables. Uh, and that's neat. So they've given us a tracking variable. We can now come back into the home page. And now we have tracking ID for those specific buttons. Exactly what I was hoping for, because what I didn't want to happen is start tracking um, buttons across the entire website, right? We want it specific for the homepage, right? And in fact, I would also add this in our navigation template too. So we'll do, go ahead and add, don't see it. Let me just double click this. This is, I think, maybe a different button. Yeah, different button here. It's the smaller size. So we're gonna go and add the tracking variable on that and then bring back a variable in here, bring back the variable here. Now we've got variables on the homepage too and we can bring a variable inside the footer too. So we're tracking that. So we have to have multiple variables because there's components inside a component inside of a template. So we had to add multiple variables to bring this out. Now, if I click the template for the navigation on the homepage, we can see the tracking ID available here. So we can call this download home. Fantastic, so we got our tracking ID. And we'll do the same thing over here as well, because it's technically the same. Uh, download home and any other buttons over here, we'll add the same tracking ID. Download home all the way through to the bottom. Download home. And this has already been implemented for the footer. Cool. Okay, so all of that has been done. Ooh, we also have a grab it now button for people that want to purchase the lifetime option. I think we should implement tracking for that, um, but we need a different tracking ID for it. So we'll have to also do a separate test for that too. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, for now, I'll just keep it as is. And we'll see if we can actually now set the click events properly. There we go. So. Since I've added the first tracking ID, the cool thing is that now this new field tracking has been um, added into my funnel steps. So now I can go ahead and add download home here. I can do the same right over here. Brilliant. So I've been able to set up the end to end tracking. If I technically start this test, we will be able to actually run, but we don't have any variants right now. So let's see what the variant is on pages this is oh there we go we have control and variant Ooh, bit of an issue here the variant is the only one that has the tracking id implemented the way we want it to so we'll go back to variant a control variant um and which is the main variant we'll add the same tracking id cool we got tracking id placed everywhere and now i want to actually create the variant that I want. Now, right now we have this um, homepage on the top fold. We have this very complex component that's an animated component that you see over here with really nice slick animations to showcase splits it. I'm concerned that this might take a cost a lot of memory uh, on the browser and perhaps people are not being able to view it immediately or there's probably some lag on the website to load up everything. So I wanna test this other video that we have on, on mobile. Uh, and we used to actually have this video across the home page and tablet, but we recently introduced this component. If you notice this component, it's very complex and multi-layered with lots of interactions. And I think it might be worth testing if the video actually performs better. So that's what I'm gonna do on this variant. So I'll go ahead on my variant B and start to set up the video. Great, that's exactly how I wanted it. So we are ready to roll this test. So let's go ahead and smash that start test button. Publish, there we go, view results. So this is where, of course, going back to this page, we'll start to see all the results trickle in. It's of course gonna take a bit of time. Lucky for us, we do have a decent amount of traffic coming daily. We have 14 live viewers, 61,000 
on average monthly uh, traffic. I think we'll get some reasonable amount of data by the end of today. So I'm gonna take a pause there. And by the end of the day today, we're gonna to come back to this and see how our test performed and whether or not we can make a decision. All right, guys, um, I'm back after not a long, maybe about half an hour. Uh, I had to make a few adjustments that I missed. Um, we moved the third step because I thought the download event is not as necessary, it comp makes things a bit complicated. I thought it would be more effective to track all the click download button clicks as well as uh, the grab lifetime deal click as uh, a conversion event, right? So whether they click download or choose to grab the lifetime deal, I would see that as a conversion um, versus you know having a second step to download the app because people that choose to buy right away, they won't go through the entire funnel to then download. Once they buy, they actually get access to the app immediately. So it kind of was a bit redundant from that perspective. So we're tracking a simple funnel, view page, and then clicks to the download home or clicks to grab, grab, grab the lifetime uh, deal. Also, one thing I just wanted to note is that on my mobile version, we actually have a form uh, both here on the call to action that actually calls a pop-up with the form as well as uh, over here we have a email uh, entry field that email capture over here and something very interesting about the way Framer works with their native forms is that if I select the form you can't add a link uh, to the button itself you can't add a tracking ID to just the button so here's a button of a Framer native form there's no uh, ability to add links. Even on the component level, I can't add a link or a tracking ID here. Uh, so the way you do that, in case you get confused, is that you go on the form level and there's a tracking ID uh, field over here, which we've now added a variable to. So this is where we actually added it. It was originally empty and I went ahead and added a new tracking variable. And as you can see in the mobile variant as well as the tablet variant on the right hand side, we have now the tracking there for download home. So we've done that on the form elements, which I forgot to do because I have um, a different call to action on the tablet and mobile because first we actually capture email. It's not a mobile first app yet, it's desktop primarily. So we need to send them the links via an email if they sign up on mobile or tablet. And now those are the changes we made, a much more simple funnel page view to click on the home page, both the download home button as well as the grab the lifetime deal up button as both a conversion event. And as you can see, you've already got some results coming in. The variant with just the video, this one here, this version with just the video is performing better. You know, this is our original kind of uh, approach that we used to have. We only introduced this uh, component version very recently, but it seems like old is gold in this scenario. And we're seeing a 23% lift. I mean, the control variant is catching up. You can see 18% still, so not too far off, but there's still a, an uplift um, with the variant, right? So, so it's really neat to see these conversion metrics. We see the conversion, we see the lift by 23%, and we also see the best stat. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it says 61% over here for best. If you go up, we actually have this, oh, there we go. The summary actually clarifies what the 61% means. Here, what we have is a recommendation for three days left before we can actually determine a winner for this A-B test. And the summary saying is that there's a 61% that the second variant, the new variant with the, just the video is the one that's gonna be performing much better with a 23% uplift, right? So we have to wait till the end of the three days. And once we're done with the three days, I'll hope to report back on my channel. Uh, but again, really nice to see such early results within just a short period of time. But just to kind of give a few comments on this, Framer have done a fantastic job of simplifying uh, A-B testing, right? They've made a very simple experience to get it set up. Um, you know, tracking IDs are very easy to set up. It's not complex. A lot of platforms, you have to use external tools. You need to then set up events and then add a script and then add a bit of code to the buttons. You don't have to do any of that, right? You have the tracking ID baked into your components. You can then give it a specific title and then uh, find those uh, tracking IDs inside of your funnel setup right here, which is fantastic. I love the setup. So easy to get this going and I'm really excited to see the results. So that's it for this video, guys. Other than that, I do have a Framer course coming out for founders. It's called Framer for Founders. There's gonna be a link in the description to sign up for early access. So do check that out. I wanna help founders build their own sites for their digital products, software companies, agencies, or personal brand. I've already been coaching founders to do this and I just wanna 
offer this in a course that can be accessed worldwide. So stay tuned for that. Sign up for early access in the link below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I'll catch up with you guys in a future video. And of course, as I always say, never stop building.